Welcome. Welcome to Aroma Genomics Revolutionary Aromatherapy. Um, yeah, I'm Tammy Davis and I am a matchmaker. Everybody has their unique pairing and my job is to um, pair individuals with, um, with nature. And that's the purpose of this blending class. So yeah, I've been, it's, it's just, uh, it's been interesting because, well, people have requested this class and at the same time, when I put it out there, I don't really get much of a response. And so I, I can't help but wonder why, other than to assume, if I wanna do that, it's because we think we already know what it's gonna say. Because we've been told, you know, there's a lot of talk around, around blending and we can certainly look at how other companies are making their blends and therefore, you know, attempt to replicate what they're doing. But what I propose to do today is to actually help you understand how to blend in a way that's unique to your specific needs, okay? So, hence matchmaker, because this is a, it's, using essential oils is truly a personalized approach. Um, no more, we can't keep going on with this one size fits all and what does this book say and what does that web, website recommend? We've got to learn how to individualize our use of oils and so as a matchmaker, I'm gonna help you, like I said, determine which oils to use, how to blend, and more importantly, why we blend. So um, to start, why do we blend? Well, we can use single node oils. And the, um, the fact is, is that they have their own, their own specific properties. And as you look at the oils and their list of properties, you can almost begin to see a lot of similarities between the oils, okay? So the purpose to blending though, ideally is to create a synergistic value as opposed to um, the, my, the way I see current blends being made, the pre-made blends that are in the market, the way I see them is that they're very specific in their, um, approach to what they're trying to accomplish in the body. And by that, I mean, if you have like a, pardon me. If you have um, hormonal concerns, they'll um, promote a hormonal blend of some sort and all the oils that they use will be in fact for like feminine hormone issues and so forth. Um, if it's a weight loss blend, we see oils in there that are very specific to what are considered appetite suppressants, right? Diuretics, I mean, things like that that are actually gonna help you um, lose weight quickly, supposedly. Um, and so you get what I'm saying. So this is the tendency when we make blends. In my world, the purpose to making a blend is to create a synergistic value that encompasses the whole system. And this is really how we get, this is when we get into the how. But the point to a why blend is to draw on different oils, three or four max. You don't need to go any further than that because as I said, number one, a lot of oils share similar properties and that would be because they have similar constituents. So. There's no sense in like having a blend of eight, nine, possibly 10 oils when you have, basically you're getting all the same, a lot of the same constituents at that point. So the recommendation really is three to four is plenty. And then, so then you want to draw on oils that are going to facilitate full function, not just a specific action. So let's just say for instance, you're wanting to lose weight. Okay, um, you're going to want to, I would recommend using an oil that um, has, okay, so let's, well, we'll get into that in a minute. So you want to look at constituents, um, oils with constituents of limonene in them. So that might be grapefruit, that could be orange, might be bergamot, could be celery seed. So you want an oil with a high limonene content would be number one. Um, why is that? 
Well, because limonene um, has been determined to be a solvent. So if there's excessive fat tissue, what it does is it actually helps the body break it down. Okay. Um, when we have excessive adipose tissue, this is an indication that the body is not breaking down fat properly. Because um, the adipose tissue is the largest endocrine organ. So if we're not, so if this endocrine organ is become so inflamed, if you will, um, that indicates a hormonal imbalance. Okay, so oils with limonene don't necessarily um, directly affect hormones. Um, bitter orange, for instance, will support um, a better use of vitamin D and calcium. So not only does it help break down the fat tissue, it supports a better use of cholesterol, okay? And it improves the use of vitamin D and, vit and, and calcium. Now you're actually improving your metabolism. And I'm giving you an example, bitter orange may not be for you. Um, Cause if you take an antidepressant, you don't really wanna mix that with orange. But again, there are other oils that actually do in fact have limonene in them. Um, but the idea here is to look at what is behind the excessive um, development of fat tissue. Could be bergamot is your choice. You know, again, when the body is highly stressed, um, which most of us are, the digestive system slows down. I mean, it's diminished considerably. So what you what's happening is we're no longer breaking down carbohydrates, more specifically glucose and protein. Bergamot actually as a um, compound supports the Krebs cycle, which is the way we um, uh, break down and assimilate carbohydrates and proteins. Now, bergamot alone is not sufficient enough because if we're not breaking down the carbohydrates and the proteins, using bergamot is not gonna make a damn bit of difference, okay? Because you actually have to be able to break them down. So this is a good example as to why one oil isn't sufficient, why you wanna blend it with something that's complementary and therefore now you might, you might wanna go into doing something like, um, you could use a palmarosa. Um, potentially, actually, as I'm thinking about it, palmarosa would be good. It's not exceptional, but it's good. And I'll tell you why here in a minute, but I no, I would throw, I would throw it in there and I'll tell you why here in a minute, but I would also throw some black spruce in there, okay? Um, because one, we're looking for another constituent called alpha pinene. So rosemary could be one, but you got to be careful with the rosemary. It's, it's high in camphor. So you don't really want to use camphor for too long because it becomes neurotoxic. All right. So what's interesting to me is that rosemary on its own will scavenge um, reactive oxygen species out of the system and help the body produce better produce nitric oxide, which is essential for hormonal production. But too much of it actually stresses the system and goes even further the other direction. So that said, black spruce um, would be good because it supports the um, adrenals and the thyroid. And that's essential for this, um, the, the activity. And again, this is an initial blend. So first we got bergamot, okay? So we're gonna table the bitter orange, okay? And we're gonna go bergamot because it's got limonene and it supports the Krebs cycle. And then we have, um, I would go for either black spruce or in this case, another one. I, no, I would just go for the black spruce just because it has the ability to influence um, a balance of adrenal thyroid function. Because when the adrenals become stressed, which they are, they default to the thyroid and that's not enough. The thyroid's not meant to carry that kind of le energy level. So this is there again, what's going to slow your metabolism down. So, and why you would be developing fat. Um, so bergamot, black spruce, and then I would go for a palmarosa because it actually supports 
the um, methylation process, MTHFR. So now you're actually better utilizing folate, which also enhances the, um, it also enhances um, the, the a better use of acetylcholine throughout the digestive system. And acetylcholine is a primary neurotransmitter that is used in the activation of the stress system. And yet it, it's also required for other functions in the body, including the digestive process because acetylcholine is actually responsible for the production of, and release of hydrochloric acid into the stomach, which now breaks down your um, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins for better assimilation, hence the bergamot. And on that note, then I would throw in some ginger root because it's kind of got a fire to it. It's at the hot spice. It's really good for kind of increasing. Um, it, it supports the, again, the use of acetylcholine in the digestive system, and it also supports the um, breakdown of fats. So that blend for, di um, for weight, and this is just a generalized blend. I don't necessarily recommend this for everyone, but it's a good one to start with. And you do want to change out your oils, but you could do bergamot, black spruce, palmer rosa, and ginger root. And I would go for that for like four weeks. Now, the thing is, if you're talking about weight loss, then you, it's not, we're not looking for, yeah, you can drop water weight easily. And you can do that very easily by limiting your diet. That's the whole point to limiting diets. But if you really want a sustainable, if you really want to lose weight and have it be sustainable, then the whole idea here is to get your body back into um, function, full function, where it is breaking down foods properly and distributing the nutrients as they're needed throughout the system and not storing them. Um, a couple of things that I want to say about oils. That's what I get for drinking a carbonated beverage, pardon me. <laughs> um, and that is, there's an awful lot of talk around um, ingesting or not ingesting. And I've been very vocal about not ingesting. And oftentimes I get hit up, I, you know, like, hey, our oils are pure. There's nothing wrong with taking them in. <sighs> Let me just say this. To take them internally is a, a different use of the oil because the, the body begins to process it. Whereas if you just put it on the skin or sit in a bathtub, you're now absorbing it. The potential for toxicity, um, it's contraindicated, taking, using oils orally is contraindicated in many, many health conditions because of the way the body processes, processes it. Not to mention the fact that, dare I say that oils are in fact, for the most part, lipophilic. And what that means is that they don't mix well with water. They're drawn to fat. This is the reason why you can put them on the skin and it just goes, just soaks right in. It's the reason why you can put them in water and you can sit in the bathtub and you can sit in the bathtub and the and the oils go to you. And they don't they don't mix with the water. They cling to your skin unless, of course, you've got oil on the side of the tub. Then they're going to go to the side of the tub. So if you're going to take an, a bath with oils, be sure to clean the inside of the tub first, just so that you can guarantee that the essential oils that you're putting in the water do glom onto you. <laughs> um, but that said, to take them by mouth, they are lipophilic. And so if we're not, if we don't fully process them, we're not going to waste them through um, the kidneys. They're going to be stored in the fat tissues. Okay. And fat tissue besides being an endocrine system organ, it is also where we store toxins. Okay, this is the reason, one of the reasons why I'm very, very big on not taking a lot of, there's no need to take a lot of fat soluble vitamins. And in fact, I've been writing about it recently. The only vitamins that we really need to be taking are vitamin C, which support hydroxylation, vitamin Bs, which support decarboxylation. Both of these are um, detox processes in the body. Um, magnesium, because we're very deficient in magnesium. And as also we're not using calcium properly. Magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. Um, when calcium is in the stress response, during the stress response, calcium is being used to activate the immune system. And with, I mean, you may think that that's what we need right now, especially given this pandemic. But the truth is, is that the immune system is very varied in its, di in its functions 
and you can have deficient in one area and accelerated in another area. And but the overall, if you have any sort of pain, autoimmune disorder, or any kind of, you, you're already on hyperdrive in the immune system. So you already, and if you have dealing with weight issues, your immune system is overactive. So using magnesium begins to help stabilize the hormonal system. So now we have C, B, magnesium. I do encourage vitamin D3 only if you're using essential oils. That's it. If you don't take essential oil, if you're not using essential oils, there's no need to take vitamin D3. Um, because you're, there's a transporter, the vitamin D receptor transports the vitamin D into the system along with the calcium. And that needs to be activated properly. Um, and when cortisol is firing on all cylinders, the vitamin D receptor has been um, altered significantly and we're not getting the vitamin D. So therefore you would wanna use, like even that blend that I was talking about for what you wanna be sure you're using some kind of essential oil to begin to stabilize the stress system so that there's a better use of um, vitamin D. You could also use an ashwagandha um, herbal supplement because that helps to regulate a little you know, to a degree um, uh, um, cortisol. So we kind of got off onto um, on blending but this is why we wanna blend. Again, because as I said, each one of those oils has their own property. Um, and it gives you an idea of how to blend because what we're taking, we're taking the bigger picture into consideration. Now there are other things probably going on besides weight gain that would alter those choices, but only you would know that and taking all of those things into consideration. But like I said, the primary constituents that you wanna be paying attention to in this case would be alpha pinene, limonene, um, geraniol, which is G-E-R-I-A-N-O-L, which is in the polymerosa. Um, those constituents right there support, I mean, all of them are beneficial, but those three in particular actually support the reduction of the stress system, reducing the impact of the stress system and helping to begin to stabilize everything. Um, So, uh, gosh, so that's where I would, I mean, and so that is why, you know, why I blend. Um, it, because it's, it's a part, again, I'm just trying to re recover here because I kind of went off on a tangent. So, because it does support full function as opposed to a very specific action. And, um, you know, like I said, I've seen, I've seen blends where, um, you know, it's for digestion. Um, I've actually seen a blend for digestion that um, completely acted like um, estrogen in the system. And um, I mean, all of them in, had estrogen-like activity in the body. And the, the challenge with that is the fact that estrogen is a primary signaling molecule for, for the stress system. So it seems counterintuitive to be using all of those oils that do that when in fact, if you're not digesting things properly, it's already a sign that the stress system has been activated. Um, but as I was saying also, fat tissue is in fact um, our body's protection mechanism. So not only is it a sign of a hormonal imbalance, it's also, a, I mean, it's a hormonal imbalance, but see, here's the thing. This is where I get into these health issues that we perceive as bad are in fact good, they're, they're protection mechanisms. So we have a population of people who are, who are struggling to lose weight. And part of the issue I feel that we're struggling to lose this weight is because we, um, we see it as bad. It's judged bad. I mean, we have how many body shamers do we have out there for both, you know, from from both sides? But we perceive this body of ours as defective and weak and bad, and we see weight as bad. And the thing is, is that it's really not. It's a sign. When I look at people and I see, if I see somebody who's carrying extra weight, the first thing I think of is like, wow. I mean, I just can't even imagine. 
what they've been exposed to that would have prompted that degree of tissue buildup. Because um, as I said, it's how we store toxins. And um, so going back to the vitamins, the fat, so we're talking about using oils in the bath and you know, taking them internally like we do would potentially um, encourage them to be stored in the fat tissue. If we get too many, if we get too much, because it's starting to get toxic, so the body's going to do what it has to do to protect itself. The same thing can be said for fat, fat soluble vitamins. And here we are, a culture that is just mega dosing on supplements. I mean, left and right. I mean, I got into um, a brief discussion with somebody I highly respect, and he's very he's a, he's an advocate for supplementation, and he was advocating for his role and seeing these things become more available to us. But the problem with mega dosing and taking, you know, these gobbles of these supplements is that the fat soluble vitamins aren't being eliminated from the body. If the body doesn't have use for it or it only uses a portion of it, the rest of it's getting stored in the fat tissue. And then you take on, let's say personal care products that are riddled with, um, chemicals and then you take on household cleaning products and then you go out into the world and if you live in a heavily populated or um, a big city there's a lot going on there so and if your body is wired for this meaning epigenetically this is how your body's going I mean this is what your body's going to do is it's going to store it and um Sorry, I'm just thinking a lot because I didn't see it going this direction, <laughs> this video. Um, but it's really, I feel like, I mean, that's, if I, if I think about why blend, this would be another reason why you would wanna blend because you would wanna take into consideration all of those things, helping the body to detox. And so oftentimes when I blend for people, I'll typically do two blends. So the first blend we talked about what it was actually helping to incorporate. So we would almost call that like a digestive blend because it's helping the body to actually better utilize nutrients. The second one would be to um, facilitate um, support the emotional body because you know, the, the chitter chatter in the mind, um, things that are going on inside that we don't know about. Um, again, this is something that really, so I would, I would do two, like I said, one is a digestive blend, like we've already talked about. And then one could be considered like a restorative blend that, um, helps to move fluid, um, helps to, um, unlock the lymph. And um, protects the kidneys. Because, I mean, I'm not going to get into like, okay, well, what are the emotions behind this? That's not what I meant. But the emotional body tends to be more of the fluid aspect of how we move things through. So in that case, you would want to use something like laurel leaf. Um, again, it supports, uh, it actually supports nitric oxide and helps to move the lymph system. Um, you could use grapefruit in this case, because that is very good for the lymph system. Uh, but only if, again, that one that you have to use caution, kind of, sort of, if you take medication. So, um, but I would definitely go for the laurel leaf. I would encourage myrtle, because that supports liver and um, helping to move fluids as well. And um, so you have myrtle, you've got laurel leaf. Helichrysum.
and goldenrod. So I had no agenda for coming into this today, like I like I just did um, with, with with talking about weight, but. Um, I think I want to start, I want to keep doing this every week. I mean, I want to continue to do this every week and I just may just continue just to pick one thing. But today was, I guess weight was a big one for me just because this last week I got heavily involved in conversations with some people regarding the blood type diet. And I was completely blown out of the water when I, re when I came to distinguish the fact that the blood type is actually a protection mechanism, just kind of like the fat tissue. And I've said it in videos for years that my theory is the body is in fact actually allergic to the environment. We're having severe allergic reactions to the environment and then come to find out the blood types that we have are in fact antigens with antibodies. So if you're blood type A, you have an antigen A and you have antibodies against B and B has antibodies against A. And what that tells me is that we've already got and you know, our immune system is already on guard. Okay, it's already on guard for very specific antigens and these antigens are carried around by different microbes. And so this is the reason why we're easily triggered. This would also explain why not all of us can eat the same kind of meats because animals have blood types too. Um, <laughs> that's the first time I said that, but that's what this is. And so this whole thing with weight and this is how this thing can come up. I've proposed, given a suggestion, well, why don't you write something about on with regards in the area of your work and kind of reworking the blood type diet, but I really needed to understand what in fact blood types are. I mean, I know what they are, I, but I, I wanted to know the, their purpose and their evolution. And so the goal here, truthfully, through all of this is to help people stabilize their immune system, stabilize the stress system so that we can limit some of these allergic reactions that we're having and find a little bit more comfort in our skin. Um, and so, and then I had on top of all that, I had a couple of parents contact me. Their kids are being diagnosed with early onset, this, that, or the other, but they're all putting on weight. There's insulin resistance going on. There's thyroid issues going on. And we're talking about children under the age of 10, okay? Um, you know, getting onto childhood obesity. And, and so that's what this is all about, you know, um, really learning how to engage our mind to communicate with the DNA. That's a video that I just did last night on our live on synergesins. Um, but learning how to engage our mind in order to communicate to the DNA to begin to stabilize the cellular, cellular, cellular reaction, which is what the brain is made up of. It's the brain's made up of cells. It's just a manifestation of, you know, group of cells. And so if we can communicate with the DNA and let them know this, and this comes into what I'm talking about with these oils, trust me, um, it's imperative. And so, like I said, I didn't see it going this direction, but I think I'm going to just kind of like focus on one condition a week unless somebody presents something you know that other than what I was intending on talking about um, so so for the restorative blend just to clarify there was laurel leaf and there was myrtle and there was helichrysum and the final one is holy basil Because again, they help to move fluids. No, I said goldenrod, duh, forget the holy, holy basil. I, I just, well, as soon as I said move fluids, I realized that I was, I, I mentioned goldenrod. So it is, <laughs> one more recap, laurel leaf, myrtle, helichrysum, and goldenrod would be your restorative blend. Do you wanna use these with children? Um, you could. Um, I have my safety and dilution chart here. For children, it's often recommended that you use, that when they talk about it, children and uh, aging adults, um, you just 
you know, it's, um, the best bet if you're going to, if you're going to be on young children, you know, like two to six, you want to use at least a 1% to two and a half percent dilution. Um, and like I said, my safety dilution chart here actually has the ratio of, you know, percentages and number of drops to um, milliliters. So if you'd like that, I can certainly provide that. You just need to drop me an, an email and um, let me know that you'd like me to send that to you and I'd be happy to. Um, but you wanna use a little bit less when it comes to the number of drops per um, for your child to help them in this case. But um, these would be the types of blends. And again, depending on what you have going on in your system would really determine, I could, you could at least start with these safely and then make some adjustments as you go on. Um, as far as how to blend them, this is where it gets interesting because I've seen so many recipes, like two drops of this and five drops of that, and you don't need to worry about that. That is more along the lines of if you're trying to create something that smells good, you know, you're trying to um, control the final aroma. Um, I mean, the only time I've ever used a little bit less of something is if it's like a, what I would consider a hot oil, something that might actually be very overstimulating something like cinnamon, clove. I mean, I might cut down on that because number one, it's really strong. But for the most part, I just use the same amount. And your better bet, truthfully, is to not blend anything until you're ready to use it. Um, which means if you're gonna make your selection for the day, you can mix them in a small bottle. You can mix them in, in you know, if you're gonna use the oils like twice a day, um, good Lord. I mean, you could actually just mix them up as you use them, meaning, I do recommend a carrier um, just to prevent the idea of a rash. And we'll talk about a rash here in a second. But if you, let's just say you were gonna do, um, let's just say you wanted to use 10 drops of an oil of a blend and you got, okay. So I would just, you got, and let's just say you got four oils so just three drops of each. So let's just say you're using 12 drops. That's a pretty damn good dosage. But here's the deal. If you took some, like if let's just say you're gonna put some on your abdomen or on your chest right here, cause you can get the aromatic value by breathing it. It'll still hit you in the nose, but you still get it into your skin. Just put some carrier on your skin. It could be coconut, it could be sunflower. It could be any oil of your choice, put it on your skin. And then the drops that you use, you know, put them in your hand if you like, and then just massage them in. That's it. Um, that's how I would blend it. So you only have to do, you know, two to three drops of each and put them on your skin and voila, you're done. And you don't have to be pre-mixing. You don't need a lot of bottles. You don't have empty, you don't have bottles going to waste somewhere because you stopped using that blend because all of a sudden the, the aroma of the blend didn't appeal to you any longer. You're only using it for, you know, and then this gives you the flexibility of changing out to using a different oil maybe every few days so that you keep the chemistry in your system changing. This is what's really important. This is another aspect of blending that we don't often talk about because we get into this practice of using the very same blend and we'll use it because we like the smell of it and we use it for months and months and months and months and, or, you know, but the idea is that as you start to use oils, the chemistry in the system is changing. So it's okay if you actually, like those two blends that I've mentioned already, if you kind of changed them up a bit, you know, and you might be asking the question, well, when do you use those, those two types of blends? Well, good question. <laughs> Thanks for asking that question. Um, I would suggest, here's how I would do it. Um, I would take the restorative blend first. So I would use the restorative blend first. So let's just say you get up in the morning. I mean, it depends on your routine, but if you get up and you, if, if there's you know a good chunk of time, I mean, unless you just jump in the shower right away, I mean, if you can give yourself like about a half an hour between the time you get up and the time you get in the shower, you could put your restore, you could use your restorative blend then, and then get, you know, then let it soak in and then take your shower. And then when you eat or right before you leave, you know, as you're putting your clothes on, put on the other one. And 
and then stack, you know, and do the same thing in the evening. But let it work with your schedule. You know, I wouldn't put them on immediately at the same time. Even if you gave yourself an hour in different, you know, like one, let's just say at 7 a.m. and the next one at 8 a.m. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, so, but then again, giving yourself the flexibility to change out those oils every few days because the chemistry is changing at that point because you are influencing chemical changes in the system. So being adaptable to those changes is another aspect to blending it okay, mixing it up a little bit because that keeps the body, um, that keeps the progress moving forward. Um, at the same time, you could do that, you could do like, um, I'm just thinking what else I wanted to say about how to blend. Because ideally, like I said, it's not necessary to um, have various drops, you know, different ratios. I've had people ask me that a lot. And you can just do it all again in the bathtub. Um, it does really good. The question I often get asked is about a diffuser. You can use a diffuser, but you don't get as much of the benefit of, from the diffuser. It's just a small amount. And you have to be con con conscious of the animals because um, animals are very sensitive to these things as well as children. So um, I, would, I would use caution with those. Um, and let me think if there's anything else because I was, Childhood obesity, obviously that's why this one was such a big deal. And um, focusing on the digestion and the, and the lymph system. And that's, again, that's how, how to blend um, is like you look at the different systems and what you wanna do. Um, let me just take a look at my, I'm really sorry for this lull. It's not really what people wanna look at, I know. Um, As far as your carriers are concerned, the other thing I was gonna say too is with your carriers, aloe vera gel is actually considered a carrier and that will increase the um, absorbability of the oils. That is one that increases the absorption rate. So you can certainly use that, especially if you have, oh, that's what we're gonna talk about is rashes. If you end up, if you have a rash, um, I personally do not use oils with a carrier any longer. I just put them directly on my skin. now. You want, if you're not familiar with oils, or I should say, if you're not accustomed to using them all the time, it's best to start with a carrier because the potential for a rash is real. Now, this doesn't mean you're allergic to it, okay? I need to emphasize that. And there's a lot of questions around that, pardon me. Um, I've had clinicians, you know, tell my clients that they were allergic to the oil. Um, the, the truth is, is, An activated stress system, okay, so I mentioned earlier, it slows down digestion. It also bogs the lymph system. It stagnates the lymph system significantly. That's the reason for the restorative one and actually helping to move the fluids. So now the sunshine, I'm gonna move over here if I can. Excuse me, well, uh, change this out. There we are, hey, <laughs> at least my background stays the same. I can just move out of the sunlight. So anyway, so um, so the limb system also stagnates. That's the other issue. And if you, and the skin is um, the largest organ of the body and it is another system that the body relies on for detoxing. So this is how, you know, so besides urination and, um, or any just sort of elimination like that, respiration, okay, perspiration, those are all forms of eliminating toxins, like the, depart the decarboxylation process that I was referring to. That is um, where we take acid in the body and, can, and take, it removes a carbon, turns it into CO2, and now we breathe it out, okay? So respiration, elimination, perspiration are all forms of and so the, the perspiration, as you know, comes through the skin. So toxins will push through the skin. And I have had countless 
episodes where somebody's put oil on their skin and they've developed um, minimally a rash. Some people started to blister and um, I'll tell you what the blistering was here in a minute. Of course, the diagnostician that was working alongside with these clients kept insisting that it was the oils. Um, and to a degree, they were correct. But the fact is, is that if the lymph isn't moving fast enough, or if, if we cannot clear these toxins fast enough, it'll push it out through the skin and it comes out wherever the oil has been placed because you guys, oils contain, a lot of them contain constituents that increase tissue permeability. So it's gonna be very easy for it to push back out the skin. So your rash is a histamine reaction, okay? Um, it is a sign that your lymph system is very stagnant, that you're very, you know, that you're really working hard to eliminate toxins. So my suggestion to you at that point is if a rash does develop, Stop using the oils. Give yourself at least three to four days of no oils for everything to kind of settle down and drink plenty of lemon water. I mean, lots of lemon water and even begin taking Epsom salt baths. Um, the Epsom salt baths contain, um, Epsom salt contains sulfate. It's a magnesium sulfate. So it's, number one, it's a form of magnesium, but the sulfate is required for the sulfation pathway, which is again, another de um, detox process. And it'll actually help draw that out of your system and help keep things moving and then begin resuming very slowly, maybe, maybe a smaller amount of the oil until you can acclimate properly. But that is generally the reason for, because for the most part, essential oils, unless you're using heavy resins, do not contain nitrogen. And it's the nitrogens that are, in fact, what we can develop an allergic reaction to, but an allergic reaction is truthfully an overactive immune system. And so the goal here is to stabilize the immune system. Um, so that would be the bigger thing that I would think about that is, you know, like I said, I don't use carriers at this point, um, but then again, I've been using them for consistently daily for well over 30 years. Um, so until you become acclimated to them, that would be my biggest suggestion. And, um, but as far as the rashes or the, um, the blistering that I told you about, that came because people were actually taking us um, some supplements called um, methylation accelerators because they were seeing naturopaths who were administering um, methylation um, supplements. And the oils do have the ability to transfer methyl groups. Um, carbone is a big constituent and then a couple of, just a couple of oils, but it does support the transfer of methyl groups. And if you're using that in combination, with a methylation accelerator, you can blow, this is a duplication of mechanism of action. And this is a, I'm gonna be saying a whole nother video on this because um, that would get into a whole nother level of blending. So that's what those rashes were. And I was attempting to get these other clinicians to work with me and tell me when they were gonna be administering these so that I could make adjustments to the oils so that we could, because this was prohibitive in a lot of areas. And, um, this is where I really started getting pushback saying that the oils didn't have that much credence and I beg to differ. We saw it happen and it really scared some people off because they, they and they were afraid of the oils. They really were very afraid of the oils because they equaled it to the oils because the rashes or the blisters were showing up where they were putting the oils. So I can't say that I blame them, um, but there was a combination of things happening there. So. That said, just use your carrier and um, use it cautiously. And like I said, the safety and dilution chart is yours if you'd like it. Um, just email me, tell me at synergessence.com and I will get that to you promptly. All right. So until next week when I do another blending, not sure what I'll talk about next week, but today's was interesting to say the least. So thank you so much. And I will talk with you soon.